Tony Tone Show on Vintage Sound 93.1 FM. Joining me on the MPW Digital TV Celebrity Hotline, he's the host of The Biggest Loser. A lot of people love that show. It's on NBC tonight, 8 o'clock Central. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob Harper. How you doing, buddy? I'm good. How are you? Good, man. Thanks for doing this. I, I really appreciate it. I have been uh, a fan, and this is going to sound weird, I've been a fan of The Biggest Loser for a long time, and I could still stand to lose a few pounds myself, so I think I need to pay more attention is what I'm saying. Well, it's great to hear that you're a fan, and you know what? Uh, you... You can just like get back on track any day you want. And, and isn't that true? So like I, I'm inspired by all these people that come to the show and the success that they have and the things that you guys have put them through. Uh, is, it looks incredibly challenging. Um, so right at, right out of the gate, Bob, what's one thing that I could do or people listening could do that would that, that would improve our health? Um, you know, maybe going to the gym or is it a change to the diet? What would you recommend? That's an easy question. It is all about your diet. So I would tell you to start eliminating sugar um, every chance you can and at every meal that you can. Perfect. And and I mean, that. And sugar, unfortunately, is in a lot of stuff now. So that can be hard because just because something says it's sugar free, that's not necessarily true, right? Yeah, uh, definitely. It's like, because I want you to stay away from artificial sweeteners. But like I said, I always say that when you look at those foods uh, in the grocery store that say they're non fat or low fat, chances are they're going to make you fat. So it's like you want to stay away from um, those kind of foods. You want to eat real and whole foods again. And uh, because like losing weight is 80% diet and 20% exercise. Wow. So when people come to The Biggest Loser, I mean, is that, and the perception isn't that it's just work out, work out, work out, but is that, you know, is the mentality of people coming in like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to physically do all these exercises, and then you have to say, listen, it's it's about that, but it's also about what you put into your body, right? Yeah, I mean, our show is a very extreme show. It's like we're losing a lot of weight every single week, so the workouts are intense mm-hmm. and they're long. So uh, you are having to come into our show working out a lot and you're also having to focus on every single thing that you're eating every day. Right. I mean, that's why I always say it's like it's really easy to lose weight when you're in that biggest loser bubble, but we really want to try to get people to um, – to lose and keep that weight off when they're in the real world. Yes, and, and I appreciate that when, and I know that you guys focus on that um, because it seems like you know they're with you and they have success. And then, how do you sustain that at home? Uh, and of course, we've seen because peop- that's the hardest part, right? Right? I mean, yeah. That like people when you you get home and there's no cameras on you and you've had a long day and you're tired and you're on the sofa and you know no one's holding you accountable. It's like it's a really tough um, place, and you've got to like give people some sort of tools, and you've got to also have some sort of motivation and resolve. Absolutely. Um, so, Bob, you go from uh, and and I'm not you know it's kind of an interesting transition from trainer and coach to now host of the Biggest Loser. Um, is it tough for you in the hosting role to not? want to jump back into give me you know get that squat lower or have you found yourself like having to throttle back a little bit uh, i mean it's really difficult for me because i have control issues too so it's <laughs> like um, you know i i'll watch what the other trainers are doing i'm like oh well you know maybe i would do that a little different maybe you know it's like i want to start getting my hands in there and i have to be respectful so it's like i have to just pull back but it is a challenge I love it. Uh, if you're just tuning in, that's Bob Harper, host of The Biggest Loser, which is on uh, uh, tonight on NBC, and everybody loves watching this show. It's amazing that it's been on for so long, but people still come back to it. Um, Bob, some of the questions that I got for you on social media, I just kind of want to highlight a few of them. One in particular, a lot of people, are they want clarification. How important is breakfast, and what should we be putting in our bodies to start the day, in your opinion? Well, um, you know, of course... Diets and uh, plans change all the time. Mm-hmm. I'm not, I've become not very much of a big um, breakfast eater. I found that because um, I, I work out in the morning, I, I like to work out on an empty stomach. I'll get up, I'll have um, a cup of coffee, and then get my workout. And then after my workout, I'll have that first meal. I think that um, that for me has really been helpful in my workout. Perfect. Okay. And that's, it so, is like, but the key is mm-hmm. uh, for people that are eating 
um, breakfast. I, I try to get people to focus on getting three meals a day as opposed to, you know, eating every couple of hours. I think so if you have that first meal and that's breakfast, make sure that you've got two meals um, planned out for the rest of your day, and hopefully that's all you're going to eat. Right. And how much water? Are you, uh, are you a big pro-water drinker for everybody? Well, um, I'm not like, you know, a crazy drink, you know, drink a gallon of water a day. I think that, like, if you're working out, you definitely need to make sure that you're staying properly hydrated. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, I don't think that people need to get get so overboard with their water intake. I had uh, Richard Hatch on the show last week talking, of course, about the biggest loser. When somebody like that shows up, because he does have an interesting uh, track record of being on these shows and he's kind of outspoken, what's your initial reaction to meeting uh, Richard Hatch when you first started the season? Well, I thought it was interesting with Richard because he's a very intelligent man and uh, he, had a, uh, he had a question about himself. He wanted to know why he wanted to be fat. That was, those were his exact words. And uh, it's because he says, you know, I know the way that I should eat. And I know that I should exercise. And I'm like, you know, just wondering why I'm just not choosing to do that. So I thought that was really interesting. But then, you know, Richard coming on to our show, he realized very quickly that uh, he was going to get no special treatment. I mean, he was going to have to focus on his own um, he had to take care of himself. He had to, you know, make his bed and uh, <laughs> uh, get his workouts in and cook in the, um, the kitchen. I love it. And, you know, I really enjoyed talking to him. Like, people, that, you know, I told people he was going to be on my show, and they're like, he's kind of a bad guy. And I said, I think that's just a perception, and he couldn't have been nicer. You know what I mean? Like, just. I totally agree. Yeah. Like, uh, I think people have an idea of who um, Richard is because of uh, how he was on Survivor. Right. But uh, he's actually very nice yeah. and, um, and quite pleasant to be around. Totally opposite. Um, on social media, Twitter at my trainer Bob. That's where people can find you. The book uh, "Skinny Habits: The Six Secrets of Thin People." Um, I, and I know that you've written books in the past, Bob. But is this something that um, you want to continue doing? Because you do have so many great things and, and, and ways to encourage and empower people. So, talk about the books for a second, and, and what's coming? Uh, what's coming up for with you? I know you got some workout DVDs and stuff as well, right? I've been really excited about my um, my books. I've had three uh, three of my books go to the New York Times bestseller list, number one. And uh, I think that uh, what I want to focus on right now, because I'm so focused and fixated on food and nutrition, that I want to do another um, another cookbook. Mm-hmm. Because I just recently um, co-hosted with Rachel Ray. I do that very often. And uh, I did all these Instagram, uh, I did my Instagram foods, and people are very interested in what I eat. People um, love seeing that, and it's like I, I, um, I really want to do that again because it, it just seemed like a lot of fun. I think that's a great idea. And, I mean, isn't it amazing that social media, while, you know, it, it, it can be an outlet for people to have negativity, but it can also be so positive because you can you can interact with people that admire and respect you, and it could really take one post from someone like yourself to, to impact somebody. I mean, that's got to – is it a little bit of pressure on you in some sometimes? I mean, a little bit? There's definitely pressure because, yeah. like you say – I mean, especially in social media, I mean, there are some really <laughs> negative people out there that are just so quick to just, like, you know, say, say something crappy. But there's so many more people out there that um, get, get a lot out of it. And so that's why, that's why I do it. I want to be able to just, like, kind of spark some sort of interest or inspire someone just a little bit for maybe just – one day to do something better about uh, for themselves, and uh, maybe that'll uh, keep going. Well, I appreciate everything you've done, and we're definitely going to watch The Biggest Loser tonight on, on NBC. Before I let you go, Bob, you're on uh, you're in the East Coast. You got a ton of snow this weekend. What's the advice for people that it snows like that, and they say, "Well, that's why I didn't go to the gym because there was uh, 20 inches of snow." What do you say to them? I say, "Well, I got out there and went to uh, went to the gym, and let me tell you, I was the gyms were." Half here in New York. Uh, so, and also, I walked so much because there was no trans, there was no um, taxis. There, um, the, the trains were running, but I, I think I looked at my pedometer on that Saturday and I walked, um, I think almost nine miles. Oh my gosh! 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, it was like I did so much walking that day. So it's like I would tell people, you can get out of, um, you can get out there and brave the snow. Oh my gosh, I love it, Bob. Listen, I, I appreciate the time. It's great to talk to you. Continued success, and you're always welcome back on the show. Okay, buddy. Thanks. I really appreciate that. All right, Bob Harper. We'll talk to you soon. Take care, man. Have a good one. You too. Bye.